We are going to have another shot at severe weather on Saturday, April 1st. And then also a widespread, high-impact, damaging wind event taking shape behind the main line of severe weather that we had on the last day of March. I'm your certified meteorologist, Jonathan Kegis, and in this video, we are going to break down that severe weather threat as it pushes east into parts of New England and into the southeast corner of the United States. And then we're going to take a look at another widespread wind event. We had one last weekend, and now the first day of April, we are pinpointing another widespread wind event in the same areas, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, the Mid-Atlantic, the Midwest, and into the Northeast. And then next week, literally deja vu in terms of another high impact blizzard in the plains and then the potential for more severe weather so we are going to get all into that over the next couple of minutes here that we are together hey hurricane season is right around the corner it starts on june 1st and you will want to subscribe to this channel if you want to stay updated on all things hurricane season 2023 so would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and give this video a a like if you find the information useful. We're going to go back first before we go forward. A very impactful day. We are thinking of everybody that were impacted by the damaging wind and tornadoes. Look at how many tornado reports. We had that rare high risk, that double barrel high risk issued from the Storm Prediction Center, that high risk for severe weather. And unfortunately, coming into fruition, you see the tornado reports into Wisconsin, into Illinois. A lot of tornadoes through parts of central Illinois, Peoria, Springfield, big tornadoes in southeast Iowa, in and around Iowa City and Ames. And then, of course, those long track tornadoes again in the secondary high risk bullseye from Little Rock. Just devastation from Little Rock all the way into the Memphis area as well. More tornadoes along the Alabama and Tennessee line also extending back toward Tupelo, Mississippi again. So another very violent afternoon and evening. That severe weather threat, while it winds down a little bit, is still evident as we move into Saturday, April 1st. I want to show you the impact in terms of the power outages. And as of the recording, as of 8 o'clock Eastern on April 1st, there were still a lot of people without power. As you might imagine, after a big, widespread severe weather outbreak, the blizzard back towards Minnesota causing 70,000 people to be without power. And it might take a while to get that back on, as you also might imagine, with the wind staying cranked up. Look at Indiana coming in with more than 70,000 power outages as well. As mentioned, the severe weather threat, so we're talking about the potential for tornadoes and damaging wind, is going to push east. So places like Pittsburgh, Erie, Pennsylvania, Portland, Maine, New York City, into Philly, Baltimore— we're going to be under the gun for those damaging thunderstorms. That will extend to a lesser degree into Norfolk, into Raleigh, Charleston. We're back under the gun. You see the yellow area popping up. That's that slight risk, that level 2 out of 5. Again, yesterday areas were highlighted in level 5 out of 5. Again, that is a very rare distinction by the Storm Prediction Center. So the threat today certainly on that elevated scale in yellow could see a few tornadoes. And I'm going to show you the high-resolution future radar coming up in just one second on a widespread scale by lunchtime eastern time there you go on saturday april 1st you see some heavy rain in new england i think the main threat though is going to be to the south and east of atlanta into extreme southern georgia into southern alabama and then closer to the florida georgia line i want to point something out here uh, if you take a close look here at the radar by three to five o'clock the middle portion of your afternoon and you see these little isolated guys, these dark purple isolated kidney bean shaped little cells here. These are supercell thunderstorms. Each one of these could produce a tornado. And again, the environment is going to be conducive to producing these discrete isolated supercell thunderstorms. And then again, it's these supercells that if the other conditions are correct and if they're, the, if they're right, which again, there are, there are those conditions present could produce some tornadoes. And again, that threat is going to continue into areas in and around uh, Brunswick, Georgia, north of Jacksonville, and then right along the Florida-Georgia line. There's 8 o'clock on your April 1st with a few of those uh, thunderstorms continuing. Beyond that severe weather threat, we are going to have the winds crank up. So it's going to be dry. It's going to be cooling down fast behind our strong, impactful cold front. But look at the winds crank up. As the storm itself continues to rage on, again, these are not severe thunderstorm wind gusts. So again, that widespread wind event where we could have power outages in this deep purple color through Ohio, 
Kentucky, West Virginia, Illinois, still back to Iowa for us in Missouri, Indiana again, Ohio, Pennsylvania. That's noon. We could have 50 to 60 mile per hour gusts in this deep, dark purple. High wind warnings are in effect in these areas. That kind of big blast of purple, if you will, indicating where we could have those wind gusts of 45 plus miles an hour, then moves into places like Pittsburgh into the Carolinas, into Virginia, into Kentucky. And again, this is where we could have those spotty power outages. So if you're watching this video from these areas, it's a good idea to charge your devices because you might be without power for quite some time because it's hard to get the men and women in those bucket trucks when you still have wind gusts of 30, 40 plus miles an hour. And that's something that's going to continue well into the evening. I mentioned about round two, about the deja vu. So we're going to fast forward now into next Tuesday. This is going to be April 4th. The Storm Prediction Center already giving that 30% or higher shot. Remember, we talked about this in a previous video that this 15% day four plus out is a decently rare distinction from the Storm Prediction Center. But it's this higher end here that's even more rare that you would see beyond four days. And this is day five here. Places like Chicago, Davenport, Iowa, Kansas City, St. Louis, Paducah, North of Little Rock, the same areas that were just impacted by strong tornadoes with this last round are going to be back under the gun once again for severe weather, potentially those long track tornadoes once again because of another very big potent system. I'll show you the setup in just one second if you stay with me. Give the video a thumbs up if you are still with me. Here it is. We're going to fast forward to Monday evening. Same areas that were getting nailed with heavy snow, blizzard conditions, back under the gun again. So here we go. Rapid City to Salt Lake into Wyoming, Casper, Wyoming, the very heavy snow coming out of the Rockies. This is Monday into Tuesday, April 3rd through the 4th. Look at this. Very heavy snow towards Ely, International Falls, Bismarck, Rapid City, Pierce, South Dakota, into the panhandle of Nebraska. And then we're talking about a, a mix from Duluth into St. Cloud, Minnesota. Look at this, where you see the green and the yellows. Again, this is where we're going to have that severe weather threat. So the second half of the 4th, April 4th, that's when we're looking for another round of potential severe weather from places, again, that just got nailed, unfortunately, from Iowa into Illinois, Indiana, back towards Missouri, into Arkansas. We're going to be watching that closely for you guys as that ramps up. Here's the pattern, the upper levels. Again, most important thing to look at at this stage in the game. Big dip in the jet stream. You see that right in here. Watch what happens. Same kind of deal as this last round. We were talking about this, this upper low. That big area of low pressure sitting right there. You see that counterclockwise wind flow there as we take a look at that upper level pattern about fifteen to 20,000 feet above your head with that wind just screaming and moving north towards Minneapolis and then working its way towards St. Louis as well, kind of pulling apart in the upper levels of the atmosphere, really promoting that rising motion to help get those thunderstorms going to begin with, and then the turning of the wind with height to get that wind shear, to get that thunderstorm, to get that supercell thunderstorm to develop. And again, with the potential to produce tornadoes. And again, this is going to be uh, Tuesday, April 4th, where we are going to be back under the gun for severe weather. And it's that Monday, April 3rd, Tuesday, April 4th timeline where that high impact blizzard potential going to be back in places like Wyoming for us in South and North Dakota. And then again in Minnesota, the panhandle of Nebraska. So we're going to be watching that closely over the next several days. Thank you guys a ton for tuning in to this video. Again, if you found this informative, please consider subscribing. We talk all things weather on this channel. So if you are a fan of the weather and want to learn more about it, click that subscribe button. If you just like staying informed and up to, up to date, Click that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Again, we'd love to have you on board as we track the weather. Again, thank you guys so much for joining. We will catch you next time.